testing. Okay, um, first of all, just now the previous talk was about Redux libraries. Uh, and the one thing that Redux libraries have in common is that they make Redux boilerplate less tedious to write. So, but, so um, today I want to introduce some alternative libraries to React, for React. That will make your life easier. <laughs> Okay, uh, first of all, a quick introduction. Uh. Uh, so I'm Kang Jing, uh, and I've been doing web development for four years already, but in the past year, I've started working with React. And I have to say, it's, uh, it's quite a paradigm change. <sighs> so I'm working at SpaceBib, uh, where we are a platform to discover, register, and enjoy mass participation events, like especially running. So a quick question, uh, how many of you go f have participated in a running event? Not many. <laughs> okay, uh, so a quick introduction, a quick recap. Uh, uh, the React ecosystem, uh, by design, is supposed to be very minimal. Uh, it tries to be just a view in MVC, uh, for example. S tries to do as little implementation so that it can be as extensible as uh, other third-party libraries can cover the rest. Uh. Uh, so for Normally, when you do de web development, you need a lot of other tools besides just a view, such as forms, form validation, uh, routing for if you are doing a single page application, and managing your state. Uh. For example, Angular has two-way data binding. For a long time, that is its greatest asset. Uh. That was the selling point. I mean, sorry, I mean Angular, not Angular 2. And also, um, normal JavaScript stuff like uh, variable manipulation. Yes? That's. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, as I was saying earlier, the React ecosystem is does as little as possible, so it can outsource the other stuff to other third-party libraries. But as web developers, that is not enough for us because we have to do a lot of common tasks, such as form, form validation, uh, state management, and yeah. Okay, so for those starting out in React. Normally, this is what you will see in the standard React boilerplate setup. Uh. Of course, you have React. And most React setups come with Redux. Where originally, there, were, there used to be a lot more uh, Flux libraries. But as of now, Redux is kind of the go-to library for managing your own state. And testing with Mocha and Chai, and some other border plates also have a lot of other stuff. Um, whether it's ESLIN or isomorphic apps or React Native integration, but most of them also have a, a, a build system, Webpack. And I would have to say, Webpack is very easy to. Uh, start out with because it's very customizable. But today I'm going to talk about alternatives. So one of the, so uh, I'm going to offer some alternatives for Webpack. Uh. Well, there is Bowserify, which I have not tried much, but it's one of the earliest options that were available back when React was, uh, was around. 
Uh, there is System JS, which is supposed to be a next generation bundler for ES6 code. Yeah, actually, I want to mention that one of the great things about React is that you also have to speed up uh, adoption of ES6, which is the mixed JavaScript. Well, I think JavaScript actually not terrible. So uh, System.js implements the import and export spec of ES6 specifically. Yeah, okay. And um, next is JSPM. JSPM is a layer on top of System.js. It's uh, in include, uh, including the import spec from System.js. Uh, uh, JSPM also includes a package bundler like NPM. Uh. Well, it's a package bundler on top of NPM. And last, I will give a honorary mention to roll up. I have not touched it, but it seems very promising uh, because it does some fancy stuff, which I will go to detail later. Okay, so uh, I would like to talk about JSPM here. Okay, at first, uh, when we were starting out with React, we were looking at uh, build options. Of course, Webpack was the most common one, so that was what we looked at. But there were also other, JSPM also surfaced as a strong alternative. For one, uh, it has a flat version management, which means that when you try to do something like JSPM install, as opposed to NPM install, uh, it doesn't, uh, okay, that's a, for example, as npm install, you try to install all the dependencies and dependencies of those dependencies. Uh. So it, it very quickly can get very heavy when you try to install a lot of dependencies. So it's like a dependency nightmare. Especially, um, especially if you try to work with uh, npm install on a virtual machine like Vagrant, uh, you will notice that uh, a vagrant on Windows, uh, you will sometimes run into problems with files, uh, file name is too long because of the dependency tree keeps going down and down. So with JSPM, uh, we actually have a, JSPM actually installs all its dependencies and those dependencies of those dependencies on the top level. So there is only a flat layer of dependencies Uh, as a result, you get a much smaller installation size and it's also much faster to install. Well, this could be useful, especially in places with poor internet, for example, where you can't afford to do a 300 MB NPM install every time you want to build a new, build a new, uh, yeah, get a workflow start. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, it's a, uh, Forward looking it is designed for the ES6 import and export spec. So, when the time comes when all the browsers have implemented uh, running under ES6 and no longer under, no longer having to be backwards compatible with Internet Explorer, <laughs> then we can remove those. Um, transpilers like Babel and we can use ES6 without System.js uh. but for now your code if you work with JSPM or System.js your code will be written compliant to ES6 standards uh. and last of all uh, if you have ever worked with Webpack you will find that sometimes this documentation can be very hard to go through. Uh, you will have to endlessly search for stuff. And the official website is quite sparse. Of course, there's a lot. And uh, in the past year or so, 
there has been a lot of helpful tutorials that came out, uh, especially um, to survive JS. But JSPM out of the box, yes, um, more helpful documentation. Uh, I want to do a quick demo. So this is what you will get if you type JSPM helper. Yes, of course, uh, you will show the, how you can run each command and a quick description of each command. Uh. Oh yeah, and then, uh, however, the drawbacks, of course, is it's not as well known as Webpack. As a result, um, it's probably harder to get help if you run into some issue that no one encountered before, or tutorials or boilerplates. But to me, I think that it's worth the effort to, because of the benefit it offers. Okay, so um, other stuff of JSPM, uh, you can uh, bundle CSS with JS, uh, which is, again, this is out of the box. Uh. With Webpack, I think you need a module or plugin in order to get it to work. Well, this is a, but this is a feature we didn't use because uh, we had a flash of unstyled content. Uh and you bundle your CSS assets with JavaScript. So while waiting for the JavaScript bundle to load, uh, the plain HTML is unstyled. And then another feature is also bundle arithmetic, which you can, uh, I will show an example. Oops. Oops. Okay, uh, I'm trying to find something first. Okay, um, so so uh, with bundle arithmetic, you can do plus and minus. For uh. example, uh, So this is a, uh, yeah, it's pretty fast. Uh. So you bundle all the dependencies in one go. If you want, you can also, uh, yeah, this is a quick preview uh, of how it works. Okay, uh, and if you are new to GSPM, you will notice that there's two versions one is the 0.17 beta, and the other one is the stable 0.16 version. And recently, we have switched to the beta version because it has um, quite a few upgrades. Okay, uh, one is roll up, it implements roll up. Earlier, I mentioned roll up, uh, and it is quite amazing because it implements, when it bundles the JavaScript files, it implements tree shaking. Uh, tree shaking is when it removes the uh, date code in your in your application, 
So if like you are bundling, um, if you if you are bundling test files inside, but your test files are not called anywhere in the code, then those test files will be discarded, and your bundle size will be smaller. And it can do this because in ES6 import, uh, all the modules are statically analyzed at compile time, unlike uh, unlike require, for example. And of course, uh, implements watch mode, which is something I think Webpack also has, but it is finally here in JSPM. And also, it has no more weight limiting, uh, but that is more of a JSPM specific improvement. Okay. okay. The next part is uh, alternative to Redux. Yeah. Uh, you wonder? Is it difficult to switch from NPM to JSPM? Uh, okay. Um, if you are switching from NPM to JSPM, uh, it's actually quite simple because JSPM use the same same uh, same syntax as NPM. Uh. For example. Um, Uh, GSPM it lives inside the package.json file as well. Uh. And if you want to do and it's a number J. Uh, let's save it. So all you do is just be fetched with uh, npm. Uh. And so it is the same syntax as npm install React. Uh. And by default, you already see that all the dependencies have installed it, so it skips them. Uh. And for anything, it doesn't. Yeah. And so, uh, JSPM is like a better bundler for NPM modules. Uh. Okay, so uh, next, uh, going on to with us. Uh, Quick recap of uh, alternatives to Redux. Uh, you have, of course, uh, plain React.set state, uh, passing down props from your parent component to your child component, uh, the other flavors of Flux which have already lost up. <laughs> and the last two I want to talk about. The first one is mod X, which is short for M observable. And the last one is uh, Reactive JS. Which I haven't touched, but is I'll give it a honorary mention again. Okay, for mod apps, um, the the thing I find is that when I com when I after having learned with us and working with it, I chance upon mod apps. Uh, right? The first thing I notice is that it's very easy to get start with. Uh, uh, because I will compare, uh, show the features later, but a mod X documentation, uh, if you try to learn Redux before, if you haven't, if you are not familiar with the flux, the flux pattern, you will find that learning Redux is uh, a bit tough because it, the official tutorial takes a hands-on approach. It walks you from step one, building a reducer all the way to a final product. So it can be a bit intimidating. Uh. And, but also it produces, a, with, Dux, you have, with Redux you have to produce a lot of boilerplate, which in some way is a good thing because it makes all your code very explicit. But sometimes it makes writing code quite a chore. So for map ads, um, the documentation is straightforward and you don't have to write as much boilerplate as Redux. Um. But while learning map ads is very get easy to get started with, you can 
very also very easily run into problems but those are more part of um, JavaScript for example with Redux you need to make sure that your state is immutable this is a kind of a limitation of JavaScript otherwise you won't be able to, otherwise Redux won't be able to compare your state correctly but with MapX uh, it's also kind of the same to give one specific example um, you, in what ads, um, with a uh, mob ads, uh, makes all your JavaScript variables observable, which means that if you update this variable, the variable that is also in another place will automatically update. But uh, for objects, plain objects, um, those changes won't automatically be tracked because that is the part of the JavaScript designer and also yeah so there is one gotcha and again with GSPM uh, mock ads is not as completely not as widespread yet but it is quickly gaining traction and uh, you already can build is really quite good yeah. so uh, now for more in-depth comparison uh. this is the parallels that I find have found between Redux and MobX for example with state um, in Redux uh, state is basically data but with MobX is you transform your JavaScript variables directly so you don't keep it in a separate space you just uh, apply this decorator where reducers are where you transform it uh, whole your state changing logic uh, with mod x uh, your state changing logic can be held in a class And with, with Redux, uh, you have uh, to dispatch uh, actions, uh, actions which uh, specify what is going to change. But with mod ads, you don't have to write those boilerplate. Uh, you just change the variable directly. And the observable will monitor changes and update it elsewhere. And okay, the next is connect. Um, that is uh, like a um, magic method to help make your components automatically observable which is serve the same function as connect uh. so connect um, allows you to read any part of your Redux state at any time uh, anywhere the same goes for observable observer and some of you uh, may have used reselect before it's another library for Redux which is like a like a uh, memo, memoized cache and mock also has that in the form of compute and Redux also has middleware where you can intercept actions before or after the push I think it's before uh, with mock ads, you also can do the same. Okay, so uh, we are so what we do is we are working with JSPM, uh, and originally we start with Redux, but we found mock ads to be quite useful as well. Uh. So we are working with a mix of both. Redux uh, is especially for routing and complex forms where you can't help but have to write a lot of logic but MobX can cover those small changes like opening a dialog or closing it that kind of small state changes uh. yeah okay uh, so does anyone have any questions